Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia and this is Lulu's Leaves. Today I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys all about common mistakes that houseplant parents make. I know that a lot of you guys watching have been caring for plants for quite some time now. I did want to make this video directed mostly towards beginner plant parents because we all have to start somewhere and I want to help you guys not make as many mistakes as I did. I will say when I started my plant journey, I definitely really, really researched plants before getting too many of them. And I watched videos just like this one in order to prevent a lot of the problems that most people have when they start out with houseplants. So before I get into the content of this video, I would absolutely love it if you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any of my other content. And if you enjoyed today's video, you can also give it a huge thumbs up down below. It helps out my channel so, so much. But with that being said, guys, let's get straight on into today's video. So the biggest misconception when people start out with houseplants is that they need a lot of water and a lot of care. That's typically because most people start out with outdoor plants and starting a garden, and those plants do typically need a lot more water. The biggest issue that we come across in indoor planting or indoor gardens is overwatering. Indoor gardening is different from having an outdoor garden because your plants aren't exposed to the elements in the same way that they are outdoors. So indoors, you don't get any of the natural wind that tends to dry those plants out, and you also don't get as much sun. A lot of indoor plants only want indirect light, meaning they're never going to actually get so much light that it's going to dry them right out. Grow lights can definitely be an exception to this case. If you do have intense grow lights on your plants going 12 or 14 hours of the day, you may need to water your plants a little bit more frequently. But if you are just indoors using your natural light coming through your windows, your plants are not going to dry out every single day. So make sure that you are only watering your plants when they dry out, or if it's a plant that needs a little bit more moisture, you can water that a little bit more frequently. But make sure that you know the specific care requirements for your plants and cater to that. My biggest savior as a beginner plant parent was my moisture meter. This thing is such a savior when it comes to caring for your plants. You definitely wanna get yourself a moisture meter, especially if you have not figured out the weight of your plant when it's wet and the weight of your plant when it's dry. Now, after about seven or eight months of caring for house plants, I don't need that moisture meter anymore unless it's for Bob back there, my giant Gloriosum, because the pot's giant. But I definitely don't use that moisture meter as much as I used to because I've figured it out by now. But as you're beginning, definitely get yourself a moisture meter so that you are not overwatering your plants. Another problem that new plant parents often have is not giving their plants enough light. This issue usually doesn't cause the death of a plant as most plants are very resilient and they typically can last quite a while in even a dark room but you will cause some weird growth patterns, droopy leaves, leggy plants, and a few other issues if you don't give them enough light. A lot of the times this is because we start out with fake plants indoors and those can go absolutely anywhere because they don't need any light. <laughs> but our house plants definitely need light to survive. That's what feeds them for the most part. And if you don't feed your plant with light, they will eventually perish. They do need that food from the sun to survive. Some plants need more sun than others. There are plants like ZZ plants that you can keep in rooms with barely any light. They're typically okay in rooms that even just have artificial lighting. But then on the other hand, you have plants like philodendron, anthuriums, hoyas, succulents, cacti, that really, really do need more light than you would think. And since a lot of people get into plants for the fact that they're aesthetically pleasing, they often forget about the fact that they actually need sunlight. <laughs> so before buying a plant, consider where you want to put that plant, 
and decide on the plant that you're going to get depending on that spot that you want your plant in. If you want to keep it right by the window, you can typically get away with any plant. Most plants will enjoy being beside the window getting indirect sunlight. There are only a few types of plants that will actually enjoy lower light conditions. So definitely do your research before buying plants. You want to make sure that you're giving them enough light so that they can survive and look the most beautiful that they can. Another problem that most people run into only because they're not aware of it, is that they actually forget to feed their plants fertilizer. It's clear that not everyone understands that houseplants need to be fertilized, so that's why I'm making this video Fertilizing your houseplants or feeding your houseplants supplementary to the sun is definitely important, especially during the growing months. In the winter, you definitely want to cut back on fertilizing your houseplants, but if you've never fertilized your houseplants before, definitely begin fertilizing your plants come springtime. I like to fertilize my plants every single watering, but diluted a ton from the recommended amount. So usually I will dial it back to about one fifth of what they recommend because usually the strength is way too much and will typically burn the roots of your plants. So definitely dilute your fertilizers, but make sure you're fertilizing if not every watering during the growing season at least every other watering or at least once a month. Hoyas are an example of a plant that typically is okay with the natural fertilizers in the soil of your plant or they really like compost and stuff like that, more natural fertilizers as they're not super heavy feeders but it's definitely important that you still feed them in order to have them bloom and just thrive because they are slow growers, but fertilizing them while they're growing will definitely help to boost their growth. Another issue that a lot of plant parents run into, especially if they are new, is that they will purchase a plant and keep it in the medium that it came in, even if that medium isn't suitable for that specific plant. A lot of the times when you get plants from nurseries, they are going to be in soil that is not suitable for that specific plant. You may get lucky and have a Calathea that likes a more damp soil, and if there's barely any perlite in that soil, it's probably going to be somewhat happy. Where if you put a philodendron in just a bucket of soil with no additives, you definitely are going to get root rot. There is no way around that, especially if you are unfamiliar with how to water your plants in those specific mediums. So I definitely recommend checking out what plants you're getting and looking into the soil requirements for those specific plants because the soil that I use for calatheas is definitely very different from the soil that I use for my hoyas, for my succulents, and that goes with a lot of other plants. I'll quickly just run through a few of the different soil mixtures that you can use for your plants. For marantas, calatheas, any sort of prayer plant, or any plant that likes to stay a little bit more moist between waterings, I would recommend about 70% soil and 30% perlite. That is a good ratio for a plant that likes to stay a little bit more moist. But if you have an aeroid that also likes to stay a little bit more moist but has a slightly juicier root system, I would definitely recommend using some orchid bark in your mixture. So if that were the case, I would use about 50% soil, 25% orchid bark, and 25% perlite for a really nice airy mixture. But one that it will also retain a little bit of moisture. That would be good for plants like anthuriums and any plants that enjoy a little bit of extra humidity. If you can't provide that humidity, often you can supplement that by keeping a tighter watering schedule or keeping the plant's soil slightly more moist between waterings. That doesn't mean wet and you still want this soil to be very well draining so that the moisture isn't just chilling in that pot and making that soil soggy, but it is important that those specific plants that like a little bit more humidity 
don't dry out immediately after your waterings. On the other hand though, for let's say more easy philodendron types, I definitely still like to use lots of orchid bark. In this mixture, I would recommend about 40% soil, 20% charcoal, 20% orchid bark, and 20% perlite. That is a really, really nice mixture for plants that like to dry out quickly and just want to absorb that moisture from the soil at the initial watering and then go a little while with out wet feet basically. That mixture works really, really nicely for Hoyas and most of my other plants that really like to stay dry. But if you are going to use it for Hoyas or plants that have slightly thinner root systems, I would definitely recommend using a more fine bark because a thick chunky bark is not going to be great for a Hoya that's in a tiny pot. That's just my two cents. The final tip that I wanna give you guys is to purchase plants that you know you can take care of. I know there are a lot of people out there that absolutely love house plants, but also love traveling. <laughs> and I can tell you firsthand that there are some plants that you can leave for a week and they'll be just fine, but there are many plants that you could leave for a day and they would look absolutely Gonzo, dead, mm -mm. been there, got rid of those plants. It's so important when you're purchasing a plant that you purchase plants that suit your lifestyle. If you're someone that likes to hover around your plants, you're always home, you're always checking on your plants, you can take care of those more difficult types. But if that plant needs humidity, make sure that you have a humidifier or at least can supplement that in some way by either using a indoor greenhouse, there are so many of those available that are relatively inexpensive. So if you can't afford a humidifier, you could totally check out a grow tent. They can be very, very affordable. Grow tents can also prolong that period that your plants need you. So if you are a jet setter, you wanna go travel, you might wanna get yourself a greenhouse so that your plants stay a little bit more humid and a little bit more moist for a longer period of time. That being said, I definitely don't recommend plants like calathea or anthuriums or any plants that really require too much humidity to those that like to travel because they require a lot of your time and attention not necessarily a lot of time during the day, but if you're not home to notice those signs that it needs water and that it's thirsty, it's very easy to get brown tips, lose leaves, and when you're starting out your plant journey, you do not want that stress. It's going to deter you away from the wonderful land of plants. So just while you're starting out, get some plants that are easy to care for, that you know you're going to be able to nurture and grow into beautiful plants, large plants one day. It's just so important considering we're taking these plants, not necessarily from the wild, but that's originally where they came from. Since we're taking those plants and nurturing them in our homes, we definitely wanna be conscious of what we're doing and make a really good effort to take care of those plants as they deserve to be cared for. It's really a privilege to own house plants, so treat it like one. Make sure that you're caring for your plants the best you can. Obviously, we all make mistakes, and that is why I'm making this video. I made those mistakes too. I got in way over my head and bought way too many calatheas, and now they're all gone. So, take it from me. I've made many mistakes, <laughs> and try to learn from my mistakes, and I promise you, you will be more successful in your plant journey. That is going to be all for me though, guys. I really wanna say thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed, hit that button down below so you don't miss out on any more content of mine. And if you enjoyed today's video, you can also give it a thumbs up. The last thing I would love if you would do is leave a tip of your own down below in the comments so any beginner plant parents can scroll through and check those out for themselves. A reminder, I do reply to every single comment made at least within the first 48 hours of the video. <laughs> Thank you guys again so, so much for watching this video and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.